Good day students, welcome to mathgoodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to find inverses of linear, power, radical, and rational functions. The instructions for the examples are as follows. We are to find, find the inverse of the following functions. All right, so for question number one, what if we have the function f of x equals negative 5 plus 4 over 7x? Now, what type of function is this? This is a linear function because the degree of the x is 1. So to find the inverse, what we're going to do is we're going to switch the output into the input and the input into the output. Okay, into the inverse of the output. So f of x becomes x. And then we have equals negative 5 plus 4 over 7. x now becomes the inverse of the output. What we're looking for, f to the negative 1 of x. So, so step number one is to switch f of x with x and x with the inverse. And then the second step is to solve for um, f inverse, all right? Let's put the steps on the side. So step number one is to switch. And then step two is to solve. Solve for um, f inverse. All right, let's go ahead and do that. In order to solve for f inverse, we need to get rid of the negative 5 first and then 4 over 7. How do we get rid of negative 5 or how do we move it to the other side? We add 5 to both sides of the equation. So add 5, add 5, and then we can switch our equation around using the reflexive property of equality. We have 4 over 7 times the inverse of f, what we're looking for, equals x plus 5. The last step will be to eliminate this not fraction right here, 4 over 7. To accomplish that, we will multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 4 over 7, namely 7 over 4. All right, so multiply both sides by 7 over 4. And on the left side, we will have our inverse isolated, f to the negative 1 of x. And on the right side, um, we can write our result as 7 over 4 times x plus 5. This is one form of writing it. Or we can distribute uh, 7 over 4. Or we can write it as f inverse of x equals 7x plus 35 divided by 4. By simply distributing the numerator 7 to x and 5 to get 7x plus 35. So any of these two forms um, will suffice for the inverse of the function f. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. What if we have the function f of n equals negative 2 over n plus 1 minus 1. Okay, so in this case, we have a rational function. The two steps we're going to use to find the inverse, we're going to switch. And the second step is to solve for the inverse. Solve for the inverse. In this case, our inverse is going to be f to the negative 1 of n. Now let's carry out the switch first. f of n becomes the input. n equals negative 2 over the input n or independent variable becomes the inverse f to the negative 1 of n plus 1 minus 1. Okay? Now, the goal is to isolate f to the negative 1 of n, and that will be our inverse, okay? 
To do that, first step is to add one to both sides. So we add one, add one. We can switch our equation around. We have negative two divided by the inverse of n plus one. That equals n plus one. All right, now we can cross multiply or reciprocate both sides of our equation. Let's go ahead and write this as n plus one over one. Since the inverse is downstairs, we can, let's go ahead and reciprocate both sides of our equation, okay? So to accomplish that, we'll just raise both sides of this equation to the negative first power. So let's go ahead and do that. So this entire equation raised to negative one, and this side also raised to the negative one. So what does that accomplish? On the left side, we have the inverse of n f plus one divided by negative two equals on the right side also will be reciprocated one over n plus one. Now to get the inverse of f by itself, we'll multiply by negative two and subtract one. All right, let's carry out the first step, multiply both sides by negative two. On the left side, these two divide out. We have the inverse of f of n plus one equals negative two. We can put a one here, multiply. We have negative two over one times n plus one is n plus one. The last step involves addressing this negative one here. So we'll simply subtract one from both sides of the equation to get our inverse function. F to the negative one of N is equal to negative two over N plus one minus one. There goes the inverse of F of N. All right, let's take a look at another example. Question number three. What if we have the function f of a is equal to negative a plus 4 divided by 5? All right, this is a linear function because the variable is of a first degree and is in the numerator. Now, to find the inverse of this function, we are going to use our two steps. We're going to carry out the switch first. And then after we switch, we are going to solve for the inverse. The inverse in this case is f to the negative one of a. Now let's carry out the switch. f of a, the output becomes a, the input, that equals negative. Now a becomes the inverse of the output, which is f to the negative one of a. That plus four divided by five. So we want to get f to the negative one of a by itself. To accomplish that, we'll get rid of the five in the denominator, the positive four, and then this negative sign in that order. Okay, so let's address this five in the denominator. We multiply both sides by five. All right, let's go ahead and switch our equation around. We have negative f inverse of a plus four equals 5a. Next is to get rid of positive 4. We want to move it over to the right side. To accomplish that, we'll subtract 4 from both sides of our equation. That yields negative f inverse of a equals 5a minus 4. Last but not the least is to get rid of this negative 1. To accomplish that, we can multiply both sides of our equation by negative one. Okay, multiply both sides of our equation by negative one, and that yields f inverse of a equals negative five a plus four. Remember to distribute this negative one to the four and the five a. Negative four and five a, so that switches your signs 
and that gives you the inverse of f of a. All right, let's take a look at another example, problem number um, four. What if we have the function f of t equals 3t raised to the seventh power? All right, so to find the inverse here, we're going to follow our steps. Step number one is to do the switch. The input with the inverse and the output with the input. And then two, we're going to um, solve for the inverse in this case is f to the negative one of t. Okay, so let's carry out our switch first. f of t, the output, becomes the input t. And 3t, the input, becomes the inverse of the output, which is f to the negative 1t. This entire thing will be raised to the what? To the 7th power. Okay? All right, now let's go ahead and get f inverse of t by itself. To accomplish that, we'll get rid of this 3 on the outside and then the 7th power. How do we get rid of 3? Well, we can simply divide both sides of our equation by 3. Okay, so divide by 3, or you can multiply by 1 third. So that gives us f inverse of t raised to the 7th power equals t over 3. Now, how do we address this 7th power here? What is the inverse of the seventh power? The inverse of the seventh power is a seventh root. So we'll take the seventh root of both sides of this equation. So the seventh root here and the seventh root here also. On the left side of our equation, this seventh root and the seventh power cancel, cancel each other out. So we are left with f inverse of t equals the seventh root of seven, I'm sorry, of t over three. Okay, so we write that, the seventh root of t over three. This can be simplified further, but um, this is sufficient for today. All right, let's take a look at another example, question number five. Now, what if we have the function f of x equals x plus one to the third power minus three? To find the inverse, we are going to follow the same steps that we've been using. We're going to carry out our switch. And then we are going to solve for the inverse. In this case, the inverse is f to the negative 1 of x, okay? All right, let's carry out our switch first. We're going to have f of x becomes the input x equals, the input x becomes the inverse of the output f to the negative 1 of x. That's plus 1 raised to the third power minus 3. Now, to get f inverse of x by itself, we have to get rid of the negative 3, the power, and then the positive 1 in that order. Uh, first thing to get rid of is a 3, so we add 3 to both sides. Let's switch our equation around. We have f inverse of x plus 1 raised to the third power equals x plus 3. Now, to address this third power, we're going to use the inverse of the third power. What is the inverse of the third power? It is the third root. So we're going to take the third root of both sides of this equation. Okay. On the left side, the third root cancels out with the third power, leaving us with the inverse of f plus 1 equals the third root of x plus 3. 
All right, now let's uh, isolate the inverse of f. To accomplish that, we'll simply get rid of positive 1 by subtracting 1 from both sides of our e equation. That yields f to the negative 1 of x equals the third root of x plus 3 minus 1. All right, so there goes the inverse of our function f. All right, let's take a look at the last example in this installment, number six. Now, what if we want to find the inverse of the function f of x equals the fifth root of x plus one minus five? Okay, now um, we know our the steps we're going to use, we're going to switch and then solve for um, the inverse. Okay, let me write my fifth root. Five has to be a little bit smaller. Our steps, one is you carry out your switch. And then step two is you solve for the inverse. In this case, it is f to the negative one of x. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, carry out our switch. f of x becomes that input, namely x, that equals the fifth root of the inverse of f, which is f to the negative one of x plus one, okay? And then minus five. So um, to find the inverse, we have carried out our switch we just now have to solve for the inverse, namely f to the negative one uh, of x. So to do that, we get rid of the negative five, the fifth root, and then positive one. Let's proceed. For negative five, we're gonna add five to both sides. Let's switch our equation around. We will have the fifth root of the inverse of f of x plus one equals x plus five. Now, how do we get rid of the fifth root? To get rid of the fifth root, we'll simply raise both sides to the fifth power because that is the inverse of uh, the root, okay? All right, so if we raise the fifth root to the fifth power, they are inverses, so they cancel each other out. And then we have the inverse of f of x plus 1 equals x plus 5 to the fifth power. To finish this up, we'll simply subtract 1 from both sides of this equation. That yields the inverse of f, which is x plus 5 to the fifth power minus 1. So there goes the inverse of our function f of x. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. If you found this tutorial beneficial to you, do give us a thumbs up. We'll appreciate your positive feedback. If you have any questions um, about this presentation, include it in the comment section below, and we'll be glad to address your concerns as soon as possible. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on math.serve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.